Hi, I'm Robert Ibach for the 24K Music Network here at the NAMM Show, where the music industry finds out the new products for 2015. Let's go inside and see what they got. Now this is the ninth version of Digital Performer. Can you tell me what's new in version nine? Well, we're just showing a preview today, so uh, there's still a lot more to, to build into the shipping version, I'd expect. But uh, a few things that we're focusing on is we're going to have multiple automation lanes that you can view in the sequence editor. So it's going to give you a great overview of the different the different automation types you're adding to a, an audio or a MIDI track. Uh, we'll have probably a good half dozen new plugins that'll emulate old school hardware uh, compressors and and some synthesizers, uh, so that's a lot of fun. And we'll definitely have a tighter uh, integration on, on MIDI learning for third-party plugins and built-in plugins, so you should have much more control over really any of the instruments or plugins that you're loading and working on in your project. And when is uh, DP9 due for consumers? Uh, that I'm not sure. Uh, we are showing just a sneak preview right now, so uh, things are still in the works, and um, you know, hopefully this will be a good year for Mo2. I'm here with Andy from Sony. So Andy, tell me about the high-res audio that Sony is coming out with this year. Well, high-res audio initiative at Sony is a very big deal. It's corporate-wide, and effectively we wanted to wake the world back up to what music great high-res recordings can do in terms of giving an emotional impact to you as a listener. I mean, if you think historically way back to Thomas Edison, when he made the first kind of, you know, scratch and plastic recordings, um, you know, every time a new generation of product came out, it got better and better and better and better. And then, you know, a few years ago, the world of MP3 kind of happened. And it's amazing because you can hold 10,000 songs in your pocket. But the development of audio quality can go way beyond that. So we have a high-res audio initiative. You know, music, in a, in, a, in a sense, has the ability to reach inside of you. But it, it helps if you have all of the information to go in there and kind of touch your soul. I don't know, it's being a little dramatic, but that's what I believe. So as a, uh, a corporate initiative for high-res audio, we have a whole bunch of new consumer high-end products, not only high-end, but consumer products that handle high-res audio, including uh, new headphones, speakers, home audio servers, a very uh, high-end um, audio Walkman that does high-res, and um, on the pro side, we have our PCMD100. You know, portable audio recorders, there's a lot of them on the market. And in a certain sense, you might think that there's been a, a little bit of a race to the bottom in terms of price and features, but we wanted to build one that had every high quality thing we could possibly put into it. Microphones that go out to well beyond 30K frequency response can do you know wide patterns as well. But beyond that, internally, it records not just its standard MP3s and up to 96K, it does 192K. But beyond that, it even does DSD recording, direct stream digital recording, which was the underlying digital audio format of the Super Audio CD. Well recognized by professionals as being the most warm digital audio, warm sounding digital audio format. And you can make just absolutely amazing recordings with the PCMD100. I'm here with Jordan from uh, Dream Theater. So yes, Jordan, right. tell me about Virgin Musical Instruments and your involvement with them. Um, well, I work with CME, and Virgin is one of the people that they work with. Um, I met Zhao, who is the uh, CEO of this company, a couple of years ago, and I knew that he was a very progressive-minded thinker in the music business. Because, you know, I'm really into, like, cutting-edge instruments. I'm interested in how to move this music business forward in tools that let you express music in new and cool ways. And when I uh, was exposed to the X key, I thought, wow, this is really, these people are really on it. The fact that it had real size keys, it was really very sensitive to my touch. I was like, I have to work with these people because I have so many ideas and they're already receptive and thinking in this kind of forward, positive manner. Now, do you like the, the mobility of the X key where it's really easy to travel with, and, or do you like it more in the studio? Um, the X key actually fits into my bag, which is right behind you, and I, um, I take it everywhere. It's like, you know, I won't go anywhere without it because it's the coolest thing. And every keyboard player that I turn on to the X key is like, oh my God, I love this thing. I'm here with Chris from SE Electronics. So Chris, um, I know that you guys and Rupert Neve Designs work together. Yes, we do. We do. There's a relationship between the two companies on a couple of different levels. Um, one, 
the same people that own and operate Rupert Neve Designs own a distribution company called Fingerprint Audio that distributes SE in the United States, in North and South America. The other is from a design perspective. Um, Sue, who's the owner of SE Electronics, and Rupert Neve have been friends for some time. And uh, they have worked together on a number of microphones over the years. There's the R&R1, which is a ribbon mic. There's the RN17, which is a small diaphragm condenser. Both of these kind of take each of their respective microphone types to a different level that hadn't really been dealt with or achieved before. The, the R&R1 is an active ribbon, but it has frequency response all the way up to 25 kilohertz, wow. which is very, very, very unusual for a ribbon mic. Most of them have a lot of roll off in the, in the teens, you know? Right. Um, not so with the R&R one. So it sounds almost more like a really mellow condenser than it does like a ribbon. The, oh. the mids and the lows are ribbony, the highs are, are almost condensery, um, which makes it really cool for, for horns and pianos. It's a very, very natural, smooth top end. The RN17, which is that guy right over here, tall skinny one with a big fat transformer on the end. That's a Rupert Neve transformer on the back end. So it's a small diaphragm condenser, very, very small diaphragm. It's only 15 millimeter diaphragm, 17 mil capsule overall with a full scale Neve transformer, Rupert Neve transformer on the output. So it's got a lot of low end, it's got a lot of guts, which most small diaphragm condensers don't have. They don't have guts. So the, the small diaphragm, super fast transient response, uh, big transformer, tons of low end. So it's, it's a very unusual mic. So both of those are, are on the unusual scale, definitely. That's the association with those two uh, okay. those two companies. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, if someone wants to purchase one of your microphones, where can they find them? Well, it depends where they are. Uh, we have distribution in pretty much every country in the world. Um, if they are in the US, uh, Sweetwater, Vintage King, Guitar Center, or any number of local retailers. I mean, those are just the big, you know, the big online ones, but they're all over the place. Um, if you go to seelectronics.com, you can see a list of, you know, how to get in touch with the distributor, a list of dealers, all that kind of stuff. But they're all over the place. I mean, some dealers carry more of the, the low-end mics, the more affordable ones. Some carry only the high-end ones. So there's a range, all the way from the $2,000 ribbons down to $200 condensers. So. So there's something for everyone. I'm here with Ian from MXL. Uh, Ian, tell me about the new USB microphones that you guys have. Okay, uh, we have a full line of USB mics that are designed basically for plugging into a computer and being able to do recording through uh, either Logic or Pro Tools, uh, GarageBand. Uh, they're pretty affordable. They're, this, they're about 75 bucks for one of these. Uh, it's called the Tempo. Comes in different colors, so you can choose if you want, you know, the white or the gray or the black. Uh, really, actually, quite a good sound. I've used them for doing voiceover work and also for recording, tracking acoustic guitars. Yeah, they're really for the price. It's a pretty, pretty staggering that they they sound so good. And I've noticed a lot of USB microphones are just 16-bit, but that's that's cool that you have the 24-bit. Yeah, this is one of the first 24-bit on the market, so yeah, it was uh, really popular. It's probably right around the $170, $180 range. You can find them on Amazon and other uh, retailers. Uh, you know, they can people can go and look and see if there's any price points that are you know competitive or what the competitive prices in the price. So what we have here is a line of, of a mobile media series, and it's basically designed for people that are on the go, mobile recording applications. You want to go to the beach, bring your iPad, write a song, work on material, go take a ride up in the mountains, or go on a camping trip, bring your phone or your, your iPhone or your iPad, or uh, also Android devices. Um, plug, you plug the, these mics plug directly into the headphone jack. So you don't have to take up the the charger. You can charge it while you know if you're running low, you can actually be charging your device while you're recording. Um, you get the Filmic Pro app. Uh, it's an app that's available through the App Store and for the iOS devices. Download that, and you can actually monitor if you're doing video and audio simultaneously. Let's say you're recording your band or something like that. You want to so the person recording so the band wants to be able to actually you know, re, uh, listen to what's being recorded, so you make sure your takes are, are right or the volumes are good, you get the app and that works with, the, with, with these really well. Uh, you plug your headphones in, you can monitor. So yeah, all, they're all designed, uh, the whole line's designed for the mobile devices. So Perry, tell me about the mini mixer from MXL. Well, so this is actually the second generation mini mixer. Um, 
so much has changed in the market in the last two, three years that we decided we needed to address a lot of different needs for audio, uh, for portable devices, iPhones, things like that, even DSLRs, because there is no good portable solution. Um, so we have this line of mobile media mics, we call that, and they all use 3.5 uh, mini jack, TRRS. And we use TRRS because it goes into an iPhone easily. So what we did was the inputs were all TRRS. What's important about that is because they're small, we could get lots of inputs into a very small footprint. Oh, yeah. Right? So you send them in, each input has its own mix, its own gain, so you can do individual mics depending on the volume of each one. And then we have a number of different output solutions. Yeah. We have an analog output, and with this we'll, we'll supply TRRS to TRRS for iPhones and de remote, you know devices like that that have power. We'll also supply TRRS to TRS, okay. which is a DSLR, because that's important. DSLRs have no power, so there's not a lot of mic options right. for those. This solves that problem. All of our mobile, mi mo mobile media mics, it's hard to say, are all electric. They get the power either from the phone or from this unit. Okay. So now that they're powered, you can go into the DSLR and now you got four mics going into a DSLR in a very portable solution. So, uh, tell me about the micro studio. Well, the whole concept now is low cost, which means the first thing you do is eliminate headcount. So you could go with multiple unattended cameras. In the past, they were pretty large and people would see them. Now we have cameras as small as this here. If you can get that, you can see my hand, you can see how small that camera is. So they can go 300 feet from the source. So you can do multiple cameras into a switcher. We've got a switcher that takes four cameras and it only does cuts. But we feel somebody that's doing a low cost, on the fly stream doesn't need all the fades and dissolves and the titling and everything else. They just want to get their information out. Right. And it's an IR remote. So if you watch the program or the yeah the program out, you can see how quickly. And those are clean cuts. I'm here with Greg. Uh, Greg, tell me about the new Zone products you have. Okay, so um, the Zone DB2 and DB4 digital effects mixers from Alan Heath. Um, we've just announced at the show that they're now Serato DJ compatible and Serato DBS upgrade ready. Um, this is really attractive to existing and obviously new users because um, they want to consider um, using our products because with these two mixers now, we've eliminated the need obviously for an external interface that people traditionally have to carry around the cables and all associated that's all that that can bring. Um, so obviously that, that, that's one element of it, but also it's to bring uh, some nice hands-on control back uh, to a, a, what we would class as a proper full DJ yeah. setup. Uh, um, additionally, via our X-Link control, um, we've pre-mapped the Zone K1 for Q plays, loops, uh, and effects. So you can kind of have a full hands-on system of combining kind of traditional control with digital DJing, Serato's great for functions and features, with the zone kind of sound and the power of our, 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 our filters and effects on top of that as well, and, um, and have a complete setup. Or addition, you could just, if you don't want the actual DVS element, you could just go down to the K1 controller and this and have kind of full deck Q play and, 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 and kind of go down that route. So it, it suddenly kind of presents even more kind of uses for the mixer. Um, through this kind of hookup, and you know, we've had, we've had really good positive reaction here. Um, existing customers that have got Serato now, like I said, can eliminate the interface. Some people that were considering maybe switching from another software to Serato, now that kind of gives them some fresh perspective, um, should we say, and the energy to maybe actually make the switch. So, yeah, it's really good. Um, and uh, it doesn't affect the price of, of the mixers. Um, uh, there's, there's no um, upgrade ne um, of the actual t mixer itself needed. Um, so yeah, uh, we hope people will take advantage of this and, uh, and, and it will bring a new, uh, new zest of energy to, to, the, to the zone mixers. So tell me about this uh, controller here. 
Hey Robert. Yeah, this is our new Chaos DJ. It's a cool little thing, very super light, um, so it's great for DJs to just put in your backpack. And uh, you've got a lot of selectivity here. Basically you have a uh, Chaos pad built into the middle of this with 120 presets, including some synth sounds as well. Also we have external connectivity, so you can uh, input a lot of external devices on here. It also works as an audio interface and also a standalone mixer. Um, it comes with a uh, free version of uh, Serato DJ okay. and um, you've got very fast selections. You can see everything's integrated nicely, normal kind of queuing up of uh, sounds that you can like, imagine here. We can loop sounds, effects. Other inputs we have is uh, we have a microphone input, also a headphone output here makes it kind of very friendly and uh, you can tap tempo with the effects. Um, chaos around there as needed, gain controls, um, high, low, mid, uh, EQ for both different channels. Uh, EQ, balance control, master volume over there. And um, pretty much that's it. We hit the club, DJ spinning real tight. Sometimes you like amps, you want more of them, so they need to look different. Yeah. AC-15 in a two-tone. We also have the AC-15 in red. Okay. Super excited about that AC-4. This is an awesome amp. This is like AC Vox World at four watts in the studio. If you're like pulling a coffee house, you're gonna play electric, and someone's like, "That guy's playing blues and tearing my face off." Yeah. It sounds like a Vox. Yeah. It's got every They're characteristic huge. at four watts in the studio. When you mic it, you feel the the concussion of like, if I did that, we're not supposed to do that. Um, <laughs> also, great stuff going on at the booth. Hand wired amp, still a great amp. Um, this is getting back to the early 60s, bringing us to where Vox started. Pre reverb, pre tremolo, just that sound, that explosion of like British greatness. Added features we have a master volume they could bypass. So if you want the old school, turn up all the way, or use the master volume to manipulate the channels, like if you were jumping the amps back then. Uh, a bright switch. The bright switch was an improvement they did in their mid 60s. A very famous, particular English guitar player asked for it. They put it in. So we have that in a boost. So another great guitarist loves like an extra gain. So it's in the amp for you at a low volume, you won't get yelled at. I'm here with Raphael DiGiorgio from Diamond Dreams Music. Raphael, tell me a little bit about Diamond Dreams, first of all. Well, Diamond Dreams Music is my recording studio. I, I do a lot of uh, music for film, TV, commercials. I produce a lot of artists. I have a really nice setup. A lot of the people and gear I use come here to NAMM. So I come here a lot and check out the gear. And I've been blessed to actually get involved with a lot of these companies sponsoring the studio. I know you're sponsoring a company here as well. Can you tell me a little bit about that? There's a company called Tokai, which is a keyboard company, and they make that like a Hammond B3 clone that they uh, were kind enough to give me for my studio. That just sounds absolutely amazing. Awesome. They're from Brazil. The problem is it's trying to get distribution over here, so I'm the only one who has it right now. Oh, right. But it does sound great. So, you know, we're working on, they wanted me to take a piano tonight and just show artists as they come into the studio, you know, their products and stuff. And the drum stuff too, actually. So it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> now, for someone who hasn't attended N NAM before, uh, could you give a little bit of insight on what would be valuable for them to attend? Um, NAM for is just, uh, just the um, convention, yeah, and what goes on. Yeah, I mean, like I say myself mainly, I it's a networking thing too. Mm -hmm. I, I've been blessed to I'll get a job with Kurzweil, Novation, Kawhi, just by attending, um, telling them about my experience, hearing me play. I'm a keyboard and. Uh, so that's been really nice, you know, and then also, you know, a lot of people come here every year that's in the industry, so you see a lot of people you haven't seen for a while, and it's just kind of a networking thing, too, and then at night, they have the concerts, uh, last night they had Israel Hood and stuff, it was really nice, so you get that whole thing, that part of it, too, which is really, really, really awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Have you performed yourself at any of the names? Yeah, I, I performed here for Kurzweil, um, you know, with Jordan Rudis, which is, he's one of the top keyboard players in the world. We worked together for seven years, so I, and then um, I've played for other booths and stuff, and you know, Nord and different things, you know, over the years, yeah, yeah. Um, and if anyone wants to um, uh, hire your studio or you as a mastering engineer, where can they f uh, find you? Um, it's diamonddreamsmusic.com, also Facebook, Rafael DiGiorgio, um, and I do a lot, like I say, I, the company is Diamond Dreams Music, but I also in, uh, uh, have a new partner now where we write music for other artists and stuff. Awesome. She's an incredible singer and writer. That's called DD and Soundworks, and uh, so it's been really great. Cool. I'm here with Mark, the owner of BAE Products. Uh, tell me a little bit about BAE. Um, 
BAE was uh, founded over 20 years ago. Uh, the gentleman was Brent Averill. It was Brent Averill Enterprises. Uh, we used to rack vintage and Eve gear. Then we started building the 1073, which brings us up to um, the point of 2000 to 2015. It's been 15 years since we've been building a 1073. Then I'd worked for him for a number of years, ended up taking over the company. We, um, we're now called VAE. Um, we developed around that circuit from a 1084 to a 1023 to a 1028, just essentially using the same mic pre, the same um, philosophy as the vintage Neve, and putting our own stamp on it. So nowadays we have a four band EQ, we have a compressor, we have the mic pre only version, we have the mic pre with a filter. Um, and all this is done with Carnell Transformers, very important. Carnell used to be St. Ives in England and it's the same company so that's what the, uh, the build and the philosophy is all about. And then further down here we have the 500 series, um, 312s for drums which are a really punchy sound and then we have the uh, 1073, brand new this for the show. It's called a 73 MPL, it's the mic free for the lunchbox, and then the 73 with the extended frequencies, which is called the 73D, that's for the 500 series. I'm here with Doug from uh, DW Fern. Doug, tell me about the compressors and uh, preamps that you have here. Well, the mic preamp, the VT2 mic preamp, we've been making now for 22 years. Still our best-selling product, um, used all over the world, vacuum tube mic preamp, and you know, it's just found a home in so many studios. The VT7, our compressor, uh, has been out for about 10 years now, found a lot of usage in mastering facilities, and a lot of people use it on the mix bus. And where could uh, consumers find your product? We have dealers all over the world, so whoever your favorite dealer is, check with them. You can go to our website and take a look and see the whole list of our dealers everywhere. Awesome. And do you have any new products coming up for the next year or past? The newest thing we have is the VT24, which is our four-channel version of the mic preamp, which is already out and available today. Um, nothing new that I'm going to talk about at this point. <laughs> Well, we've had a great NAM show here in 2015. We learned about a lot of new products, a lot of really cool things for consumers and pro audio specialists. I'm Robert Ibach for the 24K Music Network. We'll see you next time. Well, that